When we embarked on this life on the water, we had no idea what we were in for. We're pretty much into wind right now. We were trained and conditioned to work the nine to five, to strive for that promotion, run after the carrot that was forever dangling in front of us, despite the goalpost continually moving and being pushed further towards the horizon. Holy crap! So when this real horizon appeared and we took the leap of buying our floating home and swapped the chaos of the rat race for a true adventure that would make us question what was important in life, that's when our eyes truly opened up and we discovered what truly mattered. Our happiness, our health, a life of joy and being pushed to our limits to feel and to live in the moment. Go five. <laughs> and to be forever learning new cultures, new languages, and new experiences. Very special, a memorable experience. This major shift in our mindset has changed our work-life balance perception. And it's brought us here to one of the most remarkable islands in the world, dubbed the Maldives of Australia. are excited to take you to a place you may not have heard of before, Lizard Island. John, today is going to be a very emotional episode. It is going to be our very last sail north. Ah. You better put the anchor up, got the shoes on. We are off to Lizard Island today. This is meant to be one of the most beautiful islands in whole of Australia. Situated around 30 kilometres, 18 miles off the mainland, Lizard Island is the most northern resort on the Great Barrier Reef and is frequented by A-list stars who splash up to $16,000 a night. Bam, bam, bam. But there's a loophole. If you have a boat, you can anchor in the bay for free. The only catch is you have to be prepared to endure the unforgiving trade winds notorious for belting boaties who dare to make it this far. But this is one of those bucket list items. Right, she is up. So today we're hedging our bets. And away we go. What are you thinking? Are you thinking of reef in the bay? It is pretty blowy. We have up to 20 knots of wind today, so we're going to be putting a reef in the main. We're going to be sailing 30 nautical miles to Lizard Island, and it feels so good to turn that engine off. And use just the wind to get us there. All right, second reef's there. I'll use the electric reef here. When you sail for the first time, all these lines seem overwhelming. Like which rope is which and what do they do? But after a while, you get into a routine. I'll put it on the electric winch now. And it becomes second nature. I mean, at this point in our timeline, we have only been sailing for three months. I remember literally 90 days ago, we put the main out for the first time and I was pooping my pants. That's good up all these lines. Our ETA is around six hours from now. So John and I have a lot of time on our hands. With this episode being sponsored by Speakly, we thought this would be a great opportunity to share with you guys how we pass the time on these long sails. So usually I'm editing. Today I'm doing some stainless steel polishing. We'll also indulge in some brain stimulating activities. So we'll listen to a podcast or we'll read a book. And recently I've taken up the challenge to learn another language. So so for a few weeks now, I've been learning Spanish and according to a recent goal I've set, I should be able to understand Spanish and also make basic conversation in just over two months. I thought you guys too would get a lot out of this app because we're a traveling community. They offer seven different languages, Estonian, Spanish, French, Italian, German, and Finnish. Look how beautiful it is. French could be fun. Champs-Élysées? Mm -hmm, Champs-Élysées. Right. Yeah. 
and it'll save you from having to buy a heap of books. The app is so simple to use, it's interactive. Soy un hombre. And Speakly is giving you guys a seven day free trial. And if you want to continue, 60% off their annual subscription. So a big gracias to Speakly and click on the link below to get started. There are lines everywhere. I'll just take off the heading now and chuck the main sheet back on in case we need to ease it. John and I really worry that I'm going to fall overboard, <laughs> which is fair enough. We were just watching this video the other day of um, these people that were traveling to Lizard Island and they caught some sort of mackerel on the back of their boat. And as they were pulling it in, not even half of it was left because it was eaten by a shark. The last thing I'd want to do is fall off right here, right now. All right, let's get some nice B-roll for you guys of beautiful Takana sailing. Like, this is awesome. You feel so alive up here. <laughs> you really get a sense of how much we are just rolling all over the place up here. Just check out the horizon. I'll just leave it there for a minute. Can you see the boat feeling from one side to another? All right, I'll come back. Is that trying to mislead from your hat? No, <laughs> it's bamboo. We're just trying to decide where we're going to park up for the next week. Do we go on a mooring? Do we anchor? Where can we anchor in here? What do you reckon? Yeah, it sounds good. When we arrived, 25 boats were in the bay. Some had been here for weeks, others just days. So why is Lizard Island so special and what's there to do? There's the Ritzy Resort private runway. We've anchored at Watson's Bay. We'll explore snorkeling sites here and here, an epic hike to Coconut Bay and Cook's Lookout. And we'll check out Lizard Island's research center. <laughs> We have literally arrived to paradise. This morning when I woke up, John told me a saying that I didn't know existed. John, you said we're going to go for a what? A Captain Cook. What does that mean? I think it's Aussie slang for have a look. <laughs> because Captain Cook did a lot of looking and that's where we're heading today. Up Cook's Lookout. In fact, it was along this exact path that he realised what he would call the island. John just said it even smells like lizards on this island. Oh, look at that big guy now. Whoa! Running away. Oh, he's moving. Yeah, he's about to attack you. I reckon he's about a metre tall. All right, good. Let's go. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Oh. It's on the top of Cook's Lookout, which is where he came to try and find a way out of the reef. We're about 350 metres up. It's where he got the endeavour out of the reef. I wanted to have a photo with a flag, and underneath I noticed this little plastic box. Came here for a Captain Cook for a look. Found this book. It's true north, and almost due south is Melbourne, 2,570 kilometres that way. It is, which is the northernmost part of our trip. 2,570 kilometres. That's in a straight line though. Over the past 90 days, John and I have sailed, on average, almost 30 nautical miles a day. No wonder Takana's hull is pretty clean. We are about to join some other friends here in the bay for a bit of a snorkel. We're just waiting for them now. We have our wetsuits on and we're going to go to a beautiful bay just around the corner here that is supposed to be some of the best snorkeling on the island. 
I'll go elegantly. <laughs> Lizard Island's unique location has it at the centre of the inner and outer reef system. So snorkelling here feels like a rare privilege. Some pretty awesome people do. So Meet our new friend Maggie. What do we have here? A moonshine bottle. That is insane. So that mixed with the Bailey syrup makes the best Bailey. Bailey's. How long would it take to make something like that, Maggie? This? Yeah. Um three to four days brewing. All on board. Yes. I feel like Takana needs an upgrade. I think it does. <laughs> Maggie insisted we tried the home brew in all its glory. Tell us all about it, Maggie. Babies on the bottom, butterscotch snaps on top, and it's called a cowboy. Oh, <laughs> oh it is. It actually tastes amazing. I also think it's fascinating to see how other people live too, so Maggie gave us a tour. Where do we start, Maggie? My office. Where my Baileys is currently situated. Um, notice the screen below. This sits on top of this navigation desk and turns into the perfect secretary desk. I'm loving the details here with the lemons hanging. The galley, beautiful. What's your favourite part about it, the galley, Maggie? Oh, my butler's pantry. Yes. So this is the same layout as Takana. So Takana has the one bedroom here, second, and then it has the main berth. So exactly the same layout, but they have converted the third bedroom into a pantry, which is just unbelievable and so over here is the main room i can't believe you got me another drink <laughs> i'm <be> so drunk <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we parked up to watch the sunset we have met some pretty cool people on this journey including lil and hato from the greener two who shared this beautiful aerial footage with us thanks guys two true stories one john went to the doctors the other day and the doctor told him that someone was bitten on the head by a crocodile here on Lizard Island. Second true story, we just met a couple down at the beach who told us where we're going, Coconut Beach, they saw crocodile tracks on the beach a couple of days ago? Yesterday. Yesterday, oh my goodness. So we're on our way, but I just asked John if we had the radio with us and we don't. So in an emergency, we're just trying to decide like what we'll do. We forgot. We forgot, we forgot the radio. So fingers crossed we don't encounter any crops today. Makes these tracks Goanna or baby crocodile. No silka. This is legitimately Australia's best beach. But when we looked a little closer, we were absolutely horrified with what we saw. Despite being here on Lizard Island in one of the most amazing beaches you will ever find, even on this pristine beach at all this plastic everywhere as far as the eye can see look where we are guys look where we are I think the saddest thing was how small the plastic pieces were, but there were large items too. John made a good point. For the plastic to even get this far, it would have had to get through the ribbon reefs and then through several other layers of reef as well. It's Chinese writing. Is that Chinese? It yeah. looks more like Korean. No, it's just here, look, Team China. Team China, look at this one. 
Indonesian, made in Indonesia. If this plastic made it this far, imagine what's stuck and floating around the Great Barrier Reef. Our sailing friends, the Greener 2, have shared all this aerial footage with us, including this devastating site, uncovering just how much rubbish litters this coastline in such an isolated part of the world. Whenever I see this, I feel so helpless and I also worry about our future generations. So this situation is so funny. So we arrived yesterday and this beautiful couple came over and said, oh, everyone's going to be having drinks at the beach at 5 p.m. But we just arrived and we're pretty exhausted. And so tonight we're like, oh, they're going to be out there on the beach again at 5 p.m. And literally no one is here. And then all of a sudden all these people started showing up. So it looks like we're going to be having drinks on the beach, which is amazing. Just going to meet a few people and say hello and meet the community. Open air. Side by side we sway there in all the colors. Lovely. Coming up next week, we're off. Bon voyage! Hook, line, and sinker. Ah! John, it's massive! Finally! Oh my god, what the heck? We take you to a rare site, the Outer Reefs. This is the most amazing thing I have ever seen. So hit that subscribe button and a huge thank you to our amazing patrons.